Hi, welcome to the second installment of the beam analysis uh, lecture or uh, tutorial. The idea behind this is to be able to analyze beams with complicated loads So, for example, last class we did this problem, right? We had a beam and we looked at the distributed load and we looked at solutions to this kind of a problem and we did the following. We said instead of doing shear force and bending moment diagrams, it is much better to do, it, do shear force and bending moment functions because then we can convert the functions into pictures. So, the idea behind that was to solve this set of equations. DVDX equal to Q of X, DM DX equal to Q of X, D theta DX equal to F over EI, and then DY DX equal to T. So we integrated Q of X four times with uh, with four uh, boundary conditions, and we got all the solutions. And the example that I gave you was simple enough for you to do Q of X in a very easy way. In this particular case, it was a linear load. But you might ask, Professor Srinivasa, that was very all nice and dandy. But in many realistic problems, you are not going to get this kind of stuff. You are going to get concentrated loads, you know, loads that start out. So, for example, if you get a problem that looks like this, and then you have a concentrated load somewhere, or you can have a problem where you have something like this, and you have a constant load, but it is distributed. Okay, so we should be able to do these kinds of problems in a relatively stable way. So, what is Q of X for this case, and what's Q of X for this case? How do we do this? In fact, what we are going to do is look at a specific problem, and then we'll show what we can do. So, we're going to start with this, and I'm going to put our classic example problem. Going to look like this. Distributed load like that, and let us say we are trying to do a simply supported beam. And let us fix some things. So let us say this is a thousand units. This is 500 millimeters, and this is 10 newtons per millimeter. So we have specific numbers, and we want to be able to find out shear force, bending moment, functions, uh, slope functions, and displacement functions. That's what we are interested in. We are interested in SPF, uh, shear force function, bending moment function, slope function and displacement function. Everything depends crucially upon our being able to get, all of them depends upon Q of X. If we get this, rest of the stuff is exactly the same as before. So let us see if we can get Q of, X, Q of X for all of this. This is where these things called singularity functions this is where singularity functions come in. So the idea is the singularity function represents a truncated polynomial. 
that's the whole idea. What I mean by truncated polynomial is, you think something like this, see, you take a typical polynomial and you say, okay, let's say I have a linear function, so it keeps going like this forever, that's a linear function, but suppose I had something like this, where it starts abruptly and then it's linear. So this is polynomial, this is a truncated polynomial. How do we do these kinds of things? So the idea is the following. So let's let's look, look at our simplest singularity function, which is represents a very simple truncated constant function. It's called a step function. Okay, and it begins at a. continues on, right. So we want to have a nice representation for it and a representation for this looks like this. So, so let us say the height of the step function is 10 units. So jump in value, so the idea is the following, step function is represented as 10 times x minus a to the power 0. So this is the same as saying this is 0 if x is less than a is equal to 10 if x is greater than a. That's what it means. You can see that that's, that's my function. This is a completely simple and trivial way of saying. So let's write it in a way that makes sense. It is jump in value. start point to the power 0. That's what is called a Macaulay step function. The next, so what can we do with just this? You can actually do quite a lot with this. Anything which has step like phenomena you can capture. So for example, let us look at a couple of examples. So let us say I started out, my load distribution looks like this. Let us say my load distribution is like this. So this is 5 units, this is 10 units, okay, and this is at point A, point B, this is x equal to 2, this is x equal to 4, okay, and this is what we have. So, we want to be able to represent this in function form. So, I want to write this as a table. So, I am going to say x equal to here, then I am going to say jump in value. So, sorry, value of x. So, jump in value these are the three things that we will do. so in our particular case this whole this entire function starts at 0 0 and there's no jump in value that's 0 then at x equal to a value of x is 2 so this is not value of x value and x so at x equal to 2 what happens the value of x now has become 5 so the jump in value is this minus that this gives me jump in value of 5 then at x equal to 4 value of x becomes 10 the jump in value is these two and that is another 5. So our notation is going to be like this, we are going to take this and we are going to write this as 0 times x minus 0. So these are the two pieces of information that we need, 0 times x minus 0 to the power 0 plus, that is just 0, so there is nothing much to it, plus 5 times x minus uh, 
2 to the power 0 plus 5 times x minus 4 to the power 0. Right? That's our q of x. So if I'm given q of x, let's see if we can actually find how much is q of 7. Well, that's easy. So first term is all 0. So there's nothing much to worry about. So if I put 7 here. I know that 7 is greater than 2. That's no problem. So it will give me 5 times 7 minus 2 to the power 0 plus 5 times 7 minus 4 to the power 0. Both of them gives me very simple. That gives me 10. Is that correct? Yeah. Beyond x equal to 4 is 10. Now let's look at q of 3. Well, that is 5 times 3 minus 2 to the power 0 plus 5 times, oh wait a minute, if I put 3 here, 3 is less than 4 and our notation was it is 0 if x is less than a. So what happens is I will get 5 times 0, that is what we get because x is less than 4. So immediately I will get 3 minus 2 to the power 0 is 1, so 5 times that is 5. Is that correct? Let us see. That is correct. If I am here, I will get 5. See what I mean? So, I know how to evaluate the function. I know how to represent it. We can try all kinds of things. Now, if you try this, if you have a distribution like this, you know, you should get used to doing these things fast. So, this is 3 and let us say, uh, this one is 2, and let's say this one is 5, and this is at x equal to 0, this is at x equal to 7, and this is at x equal to 9. So, what happens is at x equal to 0, they get jump in value is 3, so it is 3 times x minus 0 to 0 plus at 7. The jump in value is went from 3 to 2. Can see that? So it will be minus 1 times x minus 7 to the power 0. Then plus at 9, the jump in value went back, value went back from 2 to 5. So it jump was jump was 3. So I'm going to say 3 times x minus 9 to the power 0. So you will see that. I will get this kinds of functions in a pretty 